Hello everybody, I'm Scott Favor with Virginia Mobile Air Conditioning Systems, also known as VMAX. Uh, today we're in Flagstaff, Arizona with Mitch Yegi right there of Red Point Conversions. Uh, VMAX and Red Point have been working quite a bit over about the last year on some altitude, elevation, CO2 issues, however you'd kind of like to phrase it. We've done a whole lot of testing and Mitch is responsible for uh, putting numbers to these tests and, and validating results and just doing a whole lot of stuff to help us out uh, to get you guys the information and the products that you ask about so frequently. So Mitch, would you tell us just a little bit about what Redpoint does? Yeah, Redpoint uh, conversions, we do custom van conversions here. So, uh, you know, we'll do whatever whatever people are kind of looking to do, uh, smaller jobs, bigger jobs. Um, we'll put heaters in, we'll cut windows in vans, you know, kind of whatever, whatever people are looking for. So that van right there, what are you doing to that one? Uh, we put an alternator charger in that guy. Oh, cool. Yep. Sweetness. Yeah. All right, so uh, we started on a project with Redpoint uh, last winter. Uh, we sent some heaters to Mitch here in Flagstaff, which is at 6,400 feet of elevation. And those of you that have been looking into this topic know that Airtop 2000 heaters are rated for proper operation and 100% BTU output up to 4,900 feet. So the 6,400 feet is above the 4,900 feet. So we took a factory set heater and we operated it alongside of a heater that Mitch adjusted for proper air fuel ratio and CO2 content to this elevation of 6,400 feet. And we ran those heaters for predetermined run times, which we thought were based on what people would take for typical long weekends or vacation time to be hanging out in their RV or their van um, with the heaters in use. So with that, Mitch generated this very fantastic report that's got color glossy photographs, big descriptions, and a whole lot of real good stuff. And we're going to cover this report today, and we're going to put a link to this report in its entirety. So we're going to summarize a little bit today. Uh, but the whole report will be available through that link uh, on the website, and I'll put all those links in the video so that you can get to them and check out the report in full detail. So... Um, Let's just start off, Mitch, on, on page two of the report. You kind of summarize uh, Redpoint and VMAX and, and what we both kind of do. Uh, no real explanation there. And then over on page three, uh, you get into the testing, uh, how the heaters are set up and, and, and the equipment, that sort of thing. Could you go through this for us, please? Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, so for our, our, uh, our overview, um, like, I, like Scott was saying, we're at 6,400 feet. So we wanted to see um, how much carbon would actually build up in those heaters of an adjusted heater versus a factory heater. And just compare those uh, just visually mainly to see how much carbon would build up between the two at various uh, hour marks. So yeah, uh, the heaters were run eight to 12 hours a day. Um, and a exhaust gas analysis would take place every 50 hours, roughly, um, to supply some quantitative data. And we used a, uh, a bridge analyzer for that exhaust gas analysis. Um, we also used the, the Wobasto diagnostic tool to uh, do the CO2 adjustments on the heaters as well as to see if there were any fault codes uh, and just to see how the heaters were were operating. All right, sweet. So when you did the testing, you were you tested um, the adjusted heater versus the stock heater at the same time for the side by side test, right? Right. Yeah, and they were literally side by side. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so skipping on down to the test setup section here. Um, we sent Mitch uh, some the stock heaters uh, that we sell as van life kits for your transit or your ProMaster uh, or your Sprinter van. And we did that because there's a lot of information on the internet surrounding whether or not mufflers and silencers contribute to the accumulation or the uh, rapid accumulation, abnormal accumulation of carbon within the heater. So uh, Mitch set up these kits as we supply uh, with the intake silencers and the exhaust silencers. So we wanted to make sure we addressed that at the same uh, time that we were uh, working on the CO2 analysis 
Uh, can you expand on that just a little bit, please, Mitch? As far as anything that I found out, it didn't seem to matter um, that they were on there at all. Perfect. So uh, what we did is we we broke down hours of runtime. So we have some benchmarks here, 72 hours, which will be equivalent to three days of runtime, 216 hours, which is equivalent to nine days of runtime, 336 hours, which is equivalent to 14 days of runtime, and 712 hours, which is equivalent to 30 days of runtime. So uh, Mitch ran these heaters and then at these benchmark hour limits, disassembled the heaters, the stock heater and the adjusted heater, and compared what the insides of the heaters look like. Does, in fact, the stock heater really develop carbon at an excessive rate at higher altitudes, like here in Flagstaff at 6,400 feet, and how much of a difference, if any, does a CO2 adjustment make when you do it properly? So um, let's go from there, Mitch. Yep. Uh, so, you know, starting the 72 hour test, uh, it's a very, a pretty short test run time. Um, you know, to summarize that one up, they were pretty much the same. Uh, there was a little bit more carbon buildup in the uh, unadjusted heater in that um, heat exchanger. Um, but generally speaking, they were pretty much the same. So looking at the pictures on in the report, uh, what you're looking at there is the top images are the um, heat exchanger. There's fins on the inside, which gives the heat exchanger a maximum amount of surface area to absorb the heat that is being produced within the heater. So that heat exchanger around the outside of that is where your cabin area is. On the inside there, in that sealed space is where the fire is. Uh, in the bottom two pictures, so the side-by-side -side pictures, what you're looking at there is the burner chamber. So way down in there, you see that perforated surface. That's your actual burner mat behind that. That's the piece that gets saturated with fuel. As the fuel is evaporating from that surface, there's air being blown around it. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a little pin there. That little pin uh, glows hot at startup and starts the flame and then turns off. Uh, and then you have flame in that tube. So that flame is blowing down that tube into the heat exchanger and that is where your carbon is accumulating. The black stuff you see there on the heat exchangers is carbon. It's important to mention that as the heater runs, you'll notice there's pretty much two types of carbon that form inside the heater. There is a powder-like fluffy kind of carbon that will accumulate typically uh, within the fins on the heat exchanger. It'll also accumulate down there near the burner mat as well. But down near the burner mat, you'll also get a carbon that is very hard and crystallized. Sometimes they call that coke. And uh, as these pictures progress, you'll see like these, these pictures, the 72 hour test is pretty much all just uh, the fluffy type of carbon that can be very easily cleaned with just a screwdriver, a, a, a small wire brush so that you can get down into the cracks in the burner chamber and the uh, heat exchanger, get all that cleaned out. Uh, but as you see, there'll, there'll be some of the, the other kind here in a little bit and that can't be cleaned. Uh, well, it can be cleaned to an extent, but once it gets down inside the burner mat, you're looking at component replacement. So here at the 72-hour test, not a whole lot of difference, as Mitch said, a little bit, not a lot. So let's move on to the next page where we've got the 216-hour test. The main carbon buildup was in the heat exchanger on those fins. Um, here we start to see a little more carbon buildup in that unadjusted heater versus the adjusted one. So we're starting to see that that CO2 adjustment is actually doing something for that carbon buildup. Um, and then as far as the burner mats go, you know, still very little of that crystallized carbon on there. Um, most of it is, is in that heat exchanger on the fins. Right, and again, that's uh, the fluffy kind that you, can, that you can clean out of there pretty easy with a wire brush. I mean, heater disassembly is required and you can't disassemble the heater uh, with it in the vehicle. It's gotta be removed from the vehicle to do that. Uh, many of you have seen the other videos we've did where uh, the Wabasto guys talk about running the heater on high uh, after you've had it at higher elevation to try and blow out some of the carbon. That is an effective technique, but as you can see, the, the guts of the heater, once that stuff gets down inside the fins and is solidly in there, running the heater on high is not going to produce enough air volume to blow it all out. You will get some, and that's better than getting none, um, but you will not completely clean this by running the heater on high. So it does work, 
but it has limits uh, for that purpose. So moving on next to our 336 hour test. Yeah, so this is where things started to really show. Um, obviously in the fins there on that on adjusted heater in the, in the heat exchanger, um, that carbon is starting to dunk up in between those fins and really start to build up. Um, as well as now on that burner mat, we're starting to see that crystallized uh, carbon form, which is blocking the, the air and the fuel uh, from actually coming in uh, correctly. So as we look at that picture down about the seven o'clock position, you can see it looks like a kind of a little blob there. You can't really see the perforated holes in the mat anymore. That's the piece of crystallized carbon that gets in there. And sometimes you can knock that off the surface and it'll come off. And sometimes it actually extends down inside the mat, which is below that, which is the part you can't see. Um, and with the adjusted heater, you know, still not much on that burner mat and still just some of that fluffy stuff in the, in the heat exchanger. Uh, so moving on here, we're going to flip the page to our long-term test, our 744-hour test. Yep, so this is uh, pretty much maxed out there for that adjusted heater. Um, that carbon is fully in between the fins. It's like all the way gunked up um, in that heat exchanger. Uh, we can see all that crystallized carbon, not only on the burner mat, but on the sides of that combustion tube, um, which really affects the airflow coming through uh, the heater there, um, which makes it less efficient when it, when it goes into that heat exchanger, which we can see is already gunked up uh, pretty bad. Um, then with that adjusted heater, um, we do see that fluffy carbon building up uh, between the fins and that heat in the heat exchanger. Um, which, you know, again, like Scott said, is pretty easy to clean out. You just got to take it out and take it apart. And still on that burner mat, we're not seeing a lot of that crystallized carbon. Yeah, that's uh, that's super important. If you take these, these are pretty decent DIY projects. If you wanted to clean the heater yourself, if you're comfortable doing that, as long as you're paying attention to what you're doing and being careful, it, this is perfectly fine to do it yourself. However, make sure you must, you must, you must always use new gaskets when you assemble the heaters. When you put these back together, you need new gaskets to seal the components of the heater together. And when you install the heater back in your vehicle, if you had the foam gasket on the floor, you must replace, replace that foam gasket as well. We don't ever want to create a situation where we're going to have exhaust gas leaking into the space with the vehicle occupants. It's not a good idea to put exhaust gas in a sealed compartment with a person. It's just not. So now that we have that safety announcement out of the way, uh, we can clearly see from the results of the test that there is definitely a difference that's made uh, when you're running these heaters at uh, at the extreme ends of their operating envelope. And if you're operating your heater in these types of areas, you may want to consider having uh, Mitch do one of these adjustment procedures for you. Uh, Mitch, can you do these procedures only on the bench or only in the vehicle? How do you how do you take care of this for folks? No, they can be done uh, either on the bench or in the vehicle. Uh, either way, you know, they can get sent here in the mail or drive on over. All right. Perfect. Perfect. So thanks for tuning in today, everybody. Again, we'll have a link to the full report uh, on the website. So check us out. Give Mitch a call. Uh, we've got some links to his uh, company information on our website also, www.vmacs.net. Make it a great day.